understanding of Vrindavan. It's not only a parikrama. It's not only walking by foot and we're doing our dandavats and we have done some sukritis. No, it is really a deep, deep subject to really feel the glories of Vrindavan in our hearts and become so attached to Vrindavan that we never want to leave the consciousness and the love of Radha Mohan, which is always there in Vrindavan. Jai Rasa Leela! <laughs> So this verse of Prema Bhakti Chandrika by Naratam Das Thakur is about the glories of Vrindavan. How it is so amazing. How, why Vrindavan is so special. Why all the sadhus go there. Why we always long to be in Vrindavan in the right consciousness. Not only by body, but especially by heart and by mind. So Naratam Das Thakur is singing. Vacha nera agauchara Vrindavana henostala Svaprakasha premananda gaan a place like Vrindavan is simply indescribable. Svaprakasha Premanandaga. It is deep, self manifest, ecstatic love itself. Yahate prakata sukha nahi jara mrityo dukha Krishna lila rasa anuksha Here happiness is manifest. Jahate prakata sukha And here there is no misery of old age and death. Nahi jara mrityu dukha. No birth and no death in this realm, in that abode of Sri Vrindavanda. Krishna lila rasa anuksha. Rather, the flavors of Krishna's pastimes can be relished here. At every moment. Vrindavan Dham is so merciful. <coughs> so I want to first read. Radhe 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 Sanavi. What is the Sudha Kanika Vyakya? It's a verb. It's actually the Vishwanath Chakrabati Pats. Uh, Commentary on the words of our Srila Naratam Das Thakur. And he says, What is Rindavan's real form? So he says that our, our most revered Srila Thakur Mahashai, our Naratam Das Thakur, he is revealing the truth of Sri Vrindavan. And how he is revealing the truth? He is saying, Vachanera agochara Vrindavana henustala. Vrindavan is indescribable. It cannot be expressed in words. It, it is impossible because what is happening in Vrindavan is a very mystical uh, love exchange between the divine couple. And all souls who want to enter and serve for eternity there. So that is something that is indescribable. Vacha nera agochara. It cannot be even spoken. Because it is so mystical, so deep and so all pervading this love that is manifested in Vrindavan by the Supreme Divine lovers Radha and Mohan. 
and all of their servants, all of their dasis. So indescribable means it is beyond material words. Because even we try to describe and glorify Rindavan, these are still sound vibration that have, you know, some faults of not so much realization, of not so much deep understanding or deep uh, pure-hearted souls, you know. We try to glorify Rindavan. We become purified by trying to glorify and to repeat what we have heard. But actually, it cannot be expressed properly. It can only be felt. What is this indescribable Vrindavan? And I want to invite my dear Gaudasana to maybe help us to find some words about this indescribable beauty and love that is Vrindavan. Because I know he has some very, very good realizations about that. And that would be a very good help to start into the feelings of what is Vrindavan. <coughs> wow. Jai Sri Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Yes. I think when we leave Vrindavan, then we can feel the very most deep feelings. What is Vrindavan actually? And uh, we spoke the last days about uh, this, um, was heißt das nochmal, diese essence, of essence, essence. And right? quint essence. Quint essence. And, uh, so we can see that actually our Swamini is the essence and quintessence of all feelings we find in Vrindavan. But we found out the last days and weeks that also all beings in Vrindavan, moving and not moving, are conscious. And they are guiding and helping the Leela. Like the dice, they give informations to the divine couple. They exchange informations by the dice. And dice are not some like in the material world. They are conscious. So they, the divine couple use the dice when they playing this game to exchange news and informations. Secret messages. Very secret. And we can see sometimes when Radha and Mohan playing, seeking and hiding, that when they find a very good place to hide, and the other one will not find, then maybe, for example, Radhika is seeking, she is asking the tree, or Krishna is asking a tree even, oh, did you see my beloved? And then the tree was out uh, telling something. They show the direction with their arms, with their creepers. creepers. No saying. I, because it's hiding, but very sweet. And then they know to find the partner. And once I, I was leaving Vrindavan, I was meditating, oh, what am I missing so much here? What is the speciality of this land, of this dust? what the Acharya is describing, what is so special in this? And then I, I go deep in this and I found out, okay, when I see the land of Vrindavan, it is touched by the lotus feet of our Radhika. And because she is the essence of love, 
So we can understand that this essence giving their energy to the land of Vrindavan and it getting the same quality. So, so much love is entered this holy land. And from this land, there is green grass growing. It's also influenced with this love of Radhika from the earth, but it getting more, uh, as more uh, condensed. Guru Dev always say it's condensed. He used this, and so this grass is more condensed than even the land. And the next step is when the cows eating this grass, they meditating on the divine couple and on their calf. calf? Calves. Mm -hmm. So love again becomes more condensed. And we can think about what happened with this grass in the cows. They producing this beautiful milk. What is used by the manjaris or even Krishna is, what heißt uh, uh, Tending the cows. Tending the cows and then bringing home and uh, they're getting the milk from this. Mother Yashoda's kitchen. Mother Yashoda. And they're preparing from this milk even, they make more condensed. Then different beautiful things like yogurt or butter or what Suniti say, burfis. We love this burfis so much. <laughs> Kheer. Kheer. Sweet rice. Yes. Pudding. Rasagula. Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all made by the love of the mother. And but especially when they prepare for Krishna, it's made by Radhika's hand and also our hand. And our love is entering this milk and make all the products even more condensed. So we can meditate on this, what happened. Then in the midday, when Krishna is coming, then they feeding him. And this milk product, he is feeling the love, this condensed love. And it makes him relishable what happened maybe in the night because many informations are also in this milk, in this prasadam. And then when we meditate more, then sometimes he spied out something. Spit. Spit, spit out, no? And, uh, and he said, no, I don't like. But actually, he gives, a, he give a, a donation or, or what to say? Prashad, yeah. Prashad to flying, his beloved. Flying kiss. <laughs> flying kiss to back to Radhika. So we see it is even then more uh, condensed. And when Radhika is touching this, more condensed, then she is feeding the manjaris, us, with their mouth with this leftovers from Krishna. So, this is a, we cannot explain even the simple things from Vrindavan, but we can meditate on what happened there. And as more as we meditate, as more deep we can enter this uh, Stimmung, mood, this mood in Vrindavan. 
And so we become a little attached to this. And then blessings will come. And it's all a preparation, all this condensing for the meeting of Radha and Mohan in the night time. And this is such a nice explanation what we read here about the beauty of Vrindavan even if we cannot get this high condensed uh, uh, topics to to uh, get the geschmack taste. the taste of this because our body is not prepared for this highest taste so we need the blessing of our Gurudev, that he will give us this possibility in the form of an eternal spiritual body, so that we can relish this most uh, essential food, the, the blessing of Rindavan. For that we need his blessing, and because of his blessing, we will get blessing of our Swamini. And so, this is so sweet to meditate on this holy land of Vrindavan. And we like to become an inhabitant and live there, stay forever. Right, Suniti? <laughs> this is our greatest desire. And as for, to wait for this, we we need some books and read about this, like Prima Bhakti Chandrika. So very very sweet. Thank you for your feelings, Goda. You you give this indescribable Rundavan some form of the love that is coming through all the the sand the grass the cows and then the gopis and then to the mandris to shimati radhika's kitchen in mother yashoda's house to krishna's mouth he's tasting all this love and all these messages and also giving back his feelings and that is like the eternal circle of love in vrindavan and although it is indescribable, it is always so nice and we are ever, you know, we are always eager to listen from someone how they feel when they meditate about Vrindavan. So here we have first some philosophical foundation, the Tattva Vichar, you know, there's the Tattva Vichar, that means we understand some kind of philosophical understanding so that we have a good start. And then there's the rasa vichar. It is the taste that comes by feeling and by getting a sambanda, a deep relationship in my own swarup, in my own style bath. That is the rasa vichar. But first our acharyas always give the tattva vichar that is like the foundation, the basement. When you build a house, then there is a basement so that the house can be solid and strong and no wind and no storm can move it or break anything. But then we don't live in the basement. We want to look through the windows. We let the light in. So the rasa vichar, the understanding of the deep relationships and our own services in that, that is the windows in the house of Vrindavan, so to say. Just as the Gaudiya Vaishnavas establish the spirituality and eternity of the personalities of Godhead, their pastimes, their forms and their associates. Similarly, they establish the eternality and spirituality of the holy abode of the Lord. Means establish, they help us to, to go, you know, into that direction to, to get uh, the right attitude to Vrindavan. It's an internal abode. It is fully spiritual. It's not what we see with our material eyes. We need um, 
purified heart, a spiritualized heart with the feelings of the feelings of the dasis. That's why we call each other das anudas or dasi anudasi. We want to have the the remnants. We need the prashad of those who are already inhabitants of Vrindavan. Maybe Gurudev can give also a small hint for this rem remnants. We we will get there. Suniti is telling very nice. Please. So you listen. You listen? Yes, yes, good if yes. You are telling very nicely, please. Continue. So they first start by telling what is this material world, right? We first understand this material world is temporary. Everything here, it, uh, it looks so nice and we try to find happiness, but always it ends in the disease and in the death of the body. So that is always the, the problem here. We have love, we have relationships, but they have an end. But the soul, we are looking for eternal love. We are always looking for feelings that will not end and relationships that are forever increasingly higher and higher and deeper and deeper. And that is only possible in Vrindavan. The phenomenal world, this earth planet, is a product of the external, illusory, mundane energy. But the holy dham is a transformation of the internal, spiritual energy, although it may be present within this world. So that is also another miracle of Vrindavan. It looks like it is a product of this world. It looks like it's also temporary and withering away, like the houses and the roads and everything is, you know, needs to be repaired, just like anything else in this material world is going away after some time. But really, the the real Vrindavan, that is the internal Vrindavan mood, is eternal and it's not material. It's always there to connect with and to get <clears throat> entrance and to beg entrance, to cry for entrance of eternal Vrindavan, of Prakat Vrindavan and Aprakat Vrindavan. Sometimes we say in Sanskrit, there is this manifested Vrindavan in this world and then there is this Vrindavan which is in Goloka, which is in the spiritual uh, realm. But also Narottam Dastako says that whether we believe it or not, even that Vrindavan, which is now manifest on the earth planet, it is spiritual, eternal and full of Satchit Ananda. It is not different. But maybe we cannot perceive it with the eyes. We have to perceive it through the heart and through the mercy of our Guru Parampara so that we can have access to this energy which is indescribable. When Mahaprabhu was uh, uh, present in this world, um, so they was relishing this Vrindavan because of their uh, personal position, right? They could relish it because they are Got the, or they they really have this vision from the spiritual body, and so we cannot see because we are in our material body with our material senses. If we will get the our spiritual senses, then we can relish the eternal Vrindavan in Vrindavan, right? And all our intuition and inspiration and even the words, we can speak about it, they are um, inspired by our Gurudev and by Swamini. We, 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 we don't know. We come here, we have no idea from nothing. 
And sometimes we think it is uh, made in Germany or like this, but actually it is not made in Germany or Italy or somewhere. It is made in Vrindavan. And all these inspirations are blessings from our Gurudev, from the background he got from his Guru. And so this, these are all blessings. We cannot forget this. Even if we think it is uh, uh, our mind or whatever is giving, but actually it is inspired in our heart. So like when uh, Mahaprabhu was uh, listening to his disciples and they speak and they relish them. Oh, you tell me what I speak. And it is, if we are in good luck, so it is not made by ourselves. It's inspired. Right, Suniti? Yes, that is the mercy. When mercy comes, then we don't even know how it happens. That is also indescribable. And we always pray for the mercy of the Vaishnavas, like our Satchinandan Bhaya and Gauda Chandra Bhaya, who are living in Vrindavan, that they inspire us with their love and their affection, so that we also may be learning to glorify Vrindavan and the Queen of Vrindavan and all of her dasis, so that we also may be one day somehow possible to serve them more. And we see also one direct uh, maidservant of our Swamini. No? We are in a direct contact to her. Yes. Or to him. We have many uh, inspirations from those who have already realized their Swadhups, their spiritual relationships, and they are passing it on. And in Vrindavan, we are lucky, they are the Rasika Vaishnavas. And we are lucky that we are connected to our Gurudev, that he is helping us also to grow into a ripe fruit and not to be staying green. So I want to continue a little bit because it was really amazing what happened today when I was uh, meditating on this uh, purport because I was also a little bit thinking why... Can you speak a little louder? Little louder. louder? Okay. It's yeah. Yes, yes. I, maybe also the thing is not right. Let me check it. No, it's on full. Like this is better? You can hear us better, yeah? Good. So it says here that the blessed author Naratam Das Thakur says Svaprakash Premanandagan Just as Sri Krishna's form is self-manifest, so is his abode of Sri Vrindavan, which is a transformation of his Sandini Shakti, his existent potency. Therefore it says in Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Savarga Arnantavibu Krishna Tanu Sama Upayado Bhyapi Ache Nahiko Niyama. The Holy Dham is all pervading, endless. It spreads upwards and downwards without rule and is thus just like. Krishna's body. Sri Vrindavan Dham is Sri Krishna's Svarup Vibhuti, the manifestation of his true form. Therefore, it is self manifest like Sri Krishna's body. Since it is self manifest, it eternally manifests itself also on earth. Although it resides at the summit of the spiritual sky, at the highest point. So, this is also very uh, nice meditation that Vrindavan Dham is a body, 
it's a it's a transcendental being herself so because krishna is never without his shakti and so actually it is said here sandini sandini shakti his existence potency and then i go deeper and deeper oh who is the sandini shakti of course it's nitai antare nitai bahiri nitai he is everywhere he's inside he's outside so this sandini shakti is nitai or ananga manjari or janavama that's why also in this beautiful song in the about the glories the eternal glories of rindavan dam at the end it is uh the uh, janava shi janava ma pada padma koriye smaran i want to remember to always be in the following in the footstep of janava ma why janava ma because she is now different from prema datta nitai and gore of course because they are all in a way you know so much one and not different from each other and at the same time completely individual who are you know blessing us to enter also in their services so the sandini shakti is nitai is uh how the external everything that is external becomes uh seems to be external also is the internal energy that is the example of nitai and that is why rindavan is sandini shakti is actually all of rindavan is just like um a manifestation of nitai's uh service to the divine couple that was my feeling good if i don't know if something is wrong please correct me and therefore it says why why if rindavan is so eternal and blissful and it's so high in the spiritual sense that it's like non different from krishna's form or from radhika's form or from nitai's form why is it uh, that it looks so you know normal to us and then also uh, baba is explaining that if we would if everyone would understand that rindavan makes us eternal <laughs> everyone would go there without even knowing what it takes to serve rindavan to be a real follower of the gopis of the manjaris of our uh rupa goswami of our nityananda of our goranga and they would just go there for the benefit of uh you know some sukriti or some some comfort and we can also see it nowadays that so many people are coming to vrindavan without the depth of the of the sambandha to vrindavan they have no relation they want some blessings they go to the temples they like to be good people they like to be religious and we see so many stalls where they are selling things so many things are going on but even there is also shimati radhika's mercy that she is allowing now so many souls to come there and to connect with this holy land and collect some good activities there and hopefully you know evolve higher in their understanding of the real and the eternal vrindavan <clears throat> and he says also it is very very important to understand that we see the old age death and disease and all kinds of sorrow in rindavan but that is not the eternal rindavan this is like a covering of of rindavan and we know that prada maya is covering she is like a, a you know covering rindavan for the eyes of the mundane people who have uh, not the right understanding and not the right um feelings for rindavan then therefore sometimes we say you cannot buy a ticket to vrindavan it's not possible by your passport only it's only possible by the mercy of nitai 
of Gurudev, of Shri, Radha Mohan, and all of their servants that we can enter Vrindavan, and not only by the body, but especially with the feelings and with the humble attitude to also respect all the living entity of the Holy Dharma. So, and then with this kind of uh, humble, humble serving attitude, not in this Purusha bath, oh, I want to enjoy here, I can do some nice business in Rindavan, I can go shopping and this and that, but to serve Rindavan and serve the inhabitants of Rindavan, that is something that will help us to go deeper and maybe get some glimpse of the eternal feelings that are of the highest for, uh, form of Paraki above, which is the essence of Rindavan. We were talking about the essence. So the essence of Rindavan is the Paraki above, and only Janavama and Nitai, they can actually give access to that because they are the closest, closest servant also to Chaitanya. And of course, Ananga Manjari is like non different from Srimati Radhika. And, uh, as we have heard also, she is the one that gives, like a gatekeeper, the access to the personal and deepest and confidential service to Srimati Radhika's Lotus Feet. So I, th I thought it was a very uh, amazing meditation that Vrindavan Dham, yes, it, it can be uh, seen as the Swarup of Krishna, but what or who is the, the heart of Krishna? It's Srimati Radhika. And so Ananga Manjari is her first manifestation. So she is the one that opens the Dharm, that opens service to the Dharm, and that will give this, uh, you know, transcendental eyes, the spiritual senses, our Swarup, our spiritual body. She will be guiding us in all, all different steps because she is Nitai, and Nitai is helping us from inside and from outside. Therefore, we should know that all the living beings in Vrindavan are transcendental principles. Anyone who is so offensive to consider them ordinary conditioned beings of the phenomenal or the phenomenal, this material world that are subjugated by old age, death, and their reactions to their previous activities cannot attain the supreme position of a maidservant of Sri Radha. So that is an amazing statement. And it made me very sober. When I read this, I feel, wow, because I myself also have a tendency to judge on the material level. All the time the mind is telling, oh, this is good, this is bad, this person is poor, this person is ugly, oh, they look nice, they speak sweet. But in Vrindavan, Never, never try to fall into that trap of judging. Baba says, we should not con uh, con uh, consider the, the inhabitants, the animals, the trees, and the cows of the Vrindavan who are looking like they are, you know, going through old age, death, and all the previous activities of karma and this and that. But we should not consider that. We should always see they are the special um, inhabitants of Rindavan and they should be honored and they should be served. So I'm very happy that Gurudev is giving us the chance. We are doing some service to Rindavan. We are serving uh, the bridge passes by offering some prasad and there's the pray maid and there's also our Radha Mahan. And we try to serve all the Vaishnavas and we learn this so nicely to always serve because serving is our life. And if service becomes not only a burden or I have to serve, do I have to serve? <laughs> but if service, if seva becomes a rasa, then we are close to our spiritual identity. It's a rasa, it's a taste to serve because it is our natural position to be the servants of the holy dham, of the holy masters, of all the sadhus, of the brahmanas, of the cows, 
of the children, of the mothers, and all the, you know, inhabitants of Rindavan who are looking like they are, you know, normal entities. But just the birth in Vrindavan is already so auspicious. So Baba is telling that to be conscious about that. Otherwise, we cannot attain the supreme position of a maidservant of Sri Radha. Because everything is conscious, they become aware of us. And this is our good hope. Right, good. Eh? Be careful, yes, our good hope. So don't lose hope and don't destroy the hope. <laughs> yes, everything is conscious. This to understand it. Because of this we pray to the inhabitants of Rindam to get aware of us. No? And make ser servants help to become servant. So here I have this uh, two quotes that are were touching me today. One quote is about the Guru Tattva, and I read it in one article about Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, and he is writing or saying, When one's bhajan has fully matured, Ananga Manjari is recognized as a tattva identical to the object of her service, Sri Radha. That is to say, Sri Vashabhanavi Devi Shirada is the original form of the embodiment of love for Krishna, Ashraya Vigraha, and Ananga Manjari is the original manifestation of that form. So that's why, good if you always say to us, they are actually non different. They are special. Their relationship and the mercy that they give. Because wherever she mate Radhika, she cannot go because she doesn't leave Vrindavan, she is sending Ananga Manjari. And then he says, And this Ashraya Nuga Vikraha, Ananga Manjari, that embodiment of love for Krishna, who is the Anugatya of the original form, Sri Radha manifests to reveal the Svarups of the liberated Shivas. So that is amazing again. He says, when the bhajan is mature, when the deep meditation is there on, on who I am and, and, and who, who can help me to, you know, to, to go deep into my identity and you know who, who I have to beg for mercy. It's, Ananga Manjari, because she has manifested to reveal the Svarups of the liberated Jivas, those Jivas who want to go back to the eternal Vrindavan, who want to serve, who has connected to some feeling of Sevaras. No, it's not for me anymore. It's for you. And who has taste in that. And then another verse came in that connection. About, uh, in the song of Vrindavan Das Thako, I think, about Nitai. Now we know Nitai is inside, Nitai is outside. Ki kahibi, ki kahiba ar Nitai sabar anki muka sava anga. Nitai, 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 Nutanga, Nutana Ranga. Thus he enjoys the pastimes with the Sakis and Radha Mohan. What can I say? Nitai is the eyes, Nitai is the mouth and the limbs of everyone, as he is the presiding deity of Sandini Shakti. He is acting in ever newer and newer and newer ways to satisfy Radha Mohan. 
So that is also amazing because he said, Baba said that, or, or uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti said that Vrindavan is a transformation of Sandini Shakti. So this existent potent, existence potency, and that is uh, Ananga Manjari. She is that. Nitai and Ananga Manjari are one. So she is also the dress of Srimati Radhika. She is also everything. She becomes the couch. She becomes the bed. And she is there. And so we can say, because Ananga Manjari and Radhika is one, and that's why we always say that whole Vrindavan is manifested from the heart of Srimati Radhika. And then the circle came, again became complete. Because Ananga Mandri and Radhika are like a one person, and she is wherever Radhika wants to serve. That's, so that's the feeling that we have. It's called the bath, and that bath will give also the rasa. And that's why we say also, Shimati Radhika is also a Girirani. She is also the personification of Giriraj because she is, uh, as Ananga Mandri or as Nitai, manifesting all the places for the Leela, all the, you know, the Kunjas, everything. And that's why when we meditate on Nitai, uh, this uh, song is so nice. He's inside, he's outside. So actually, it's also Ananga Mandri. And she is the one who is creating and becoming the Holy Dharm. And I think for myself, that is why Baba is also telling us to be very conscious when we are in Vrindavan and feel Nitai everywhere and feel that the Holy Dharm is a manifestation of Nitai and uh, to become, um, you know, servants of the Holy Dharm and not enjoyers of the Holy Dharm or, you know, whatever can be. A little louder again. Yes, and so that we don't make any mistakes while we are there, that we can be conscious about the Holy Dharm, that is everything in Vrindavan is a manifestation of Nita's mercy. Yeah, good. So I'm already, please help me with that. I, I think it's a very interesting subject. Uh, because it is the heart of our heart. It's, um, it has so much to do with developing my own Swarup, the way I feel in Rindavan, so in the way I develop my consciousness, um, develop my relationship and my, um, with Ananga Manjari with Srimati Radhika as Ananga Mandri, and they are the team, actually. They are very, uh, the internal and the antaranga and the bahiranga energies that become everything to please Mohan, to do the service. And not only Mohan, of course, because all the living entities who are there, who want to enter, they are also nourished, protected, and loved by Srimati Radhika and as Nitai here in this material world, as Guru Tattva is manifesting through all different living entities who are ready to do the service and being used in this way to call the living entities back home to the spiritual abode. Maybe you you can help me with that, Goda Chandra or our Sachin Andan Bhai. Radhe. <laughs> so <clears throat> maybe I cannot help with the subject. But I can share something. What I was thinking about two days ago. I also share with Guru Dev. Last time we read the verse with Vishaka Saki. 
And then you, Suniti, you shared afterwards that you had the feeling that somehow not the same feelings coming today in this lecture. Mm -hmm. We were talking about Ananga Manjari, Vishaka, Radharani, and how similar Vishaka Saki is to Srimati Radhika. That they are almost looking same, that they are born at the same time, that they are so near to each other like bosom friends, they share the same kind of humor, they share the same kind of feeling that they can, can discuss so intimate subjects that we can see in Gora Leela, Goranga sharing with Ramananda Roy. And that Ananga Manjari, actually, she is so similar to Radharani that sometimes Krishna cannot recognize it's Radharani Ananga Manjari. Who? So then I was thinking, okay, we want to fix ourselves in Srimati Radhika only. So for me personally, it's difficult to do that when I feel like, oh, Vishaka is also like Radharani. Oh, Ananga Manjari also like Radharani. So when they are almost similar, then, then where is the difference? Then it becomes complicated for me to fix myself in Srimati Radhika. But that is just my own experience or my own problem that I can develop in my mind. So for me, it's a little difficult to, to think about the similarities and how they are almost non-different from each other. It's difficult for me to listen because I'm not fixed in Radharani. And I want to fix myself in Radharani. So I don't want to listen that someone is similar like her or almost the same or somehow non-different. From the point of Tattva, it may be, be true. But emotional, I don't want to listen that because then I'm thinking, okay, they are all the same. <laughs> so that was my my thinking process when you shared about that feelings not came in that lecture when we talked about Vishakant and Ananga Manjari. I think that was the reason for me. I don't know it's the reason for others. <laughs> and now I just came a little late to the lecture, but I listened about Sandini, Samvet, Ladini, this different Shaktis and Honestly, until this day, I always also try to understand no? Sambit, Sandini, Ladini, the three spiritual energies, divisions of that. And I know it's connected to the Sat and the Chit and to the Ananda, but somehow it becomes too mental for me. It, it goes out from the heart, from the feelings. It goes more in the in the tattva tattva gyan area. So I think you explained very nice, and Baba also explaining everything very nice. But for me, is I don't want to follow so much in this tattva gyan. Thing. I only want to stay ignorant and stupid and only hope for the mercy of Radharani and Gurudev that somehow they can help me to realize. I have no capacity to understand and to study. I want to keep myself in that ignorant position. <laughs> I don't want to burn out my brain by trying to understand this Tattva. But 
Yeah, that is just my sharing from my own perspective of that. I don't know it's helpful to someone. <laughs> radhe, radhe. Thank you. Thank you, Radhe Radhe. I just, you know, in the beginning we were sharing about many beautiful things of Rindavan. And I just tried to follow the, the words of, of the purport. And then I, I really, I like to meditate. Personally, I like to meditate about Ananga Mandri a lot. So for me, it is not a burden, although I also know that I'm stupid. And like Gurudev, sometimes I ask you, Gurudev, is it too much? Is it too much? And he says, no, no, Tattva is the foundation. But from there we go further. But, uh, you know, actually I choose the verses from Prima Bhakti Chandrika. I think maybe more than 50%, I didn't check it, are about the Tattva. Because the Prema Bhakti Chandrika is establishing her first, we are not this body, we are servants of the divine, and we we are in this material realm, we want to develop our soul consciousness, so many things are there. And this verse today, it was like a little bit about that. But I apologize if it was too much of this, of this, um, philosophy, but I think it uh, belongs together in a way if it doesn't become only the only subject. And I already took out most of the more uh, complicated things or quotes. So I hope uh, still it was relishable in a little bit. What is your feeling about this, Gurudev? Advise me if I do it wrong. Tattva is the foundation of the devotion. So, Prem Bhakti Chandrika is Tattva is also and Prema, Prema Bhakti Chandrika. This is the divine life Prema Bhakti, Moonlight, this book is a beautiful way to find out. But we have to know also little foundation, what is the base on this Prema. If not, then we start loving to material, human body, and sexual, when I sense enjoyment, then we think this is prema. That is nothing. Prema is based on this foundation. That is the foundation means to understand this tattva. Yeah, I agree with you. I can feel that it's sometimes not so juicy. I mean, when we read this uh, um, Raghunathas, what he is giving, that is uh, the topmost one can get. This is what I feel, and it is extremely juicy. Hey, Madhuri. You see, we speak about Jews and Madhuri is coming. 